Let's profile PC laptop displays with Calibrite Profiler. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. This display profiling guide will work for any Windows laptop built-in display or all-in-one PC. Do note that not all displays are of equal quality. Some are going to produce better profiles than others. For compatible calibration devices, any device compatible with Calibrite Profiler will work with this guide. Do note that I'll be using Calibrite Pro device, which will give me more control over the ICC profile that I am about to create. However, if you have one of their starter devices, this guide will certainly work for those devices as well. Because we are working with a computer operating system, there are settings that we need to change or alter for us to get the best profiling result possible. I'll leave a link to that guide in the description. I highly recommend that you check that out before you continue on with this process. With that in mind, if you have multiple displays linked up to your system, it is always recommended that those displays are in extended mode and not in duplicated mode for you to be able to properly go in and profile the display. The nice thing about having a laptop is that you can disconnect all the external displays, leaving just the internal one running. This way you know exactly the display that you're going to profile. And with this in mind, we need to leave our display on and running for at least 15 minutes at the very minimum, if not 30 minutes for us to get the best profiling result possible. This is going to give the backlight the opportunity to warm up and stabilize before we start the process. With this in mind, let's quickly talk about my setup. I am going to be doing this profiling on a Razer Blade 18. This is a 2K display and it is a regular backlight display. Now, one thing that we need to think about when we are trying to profile our laptop display is what type of backlight does it have. The reason being is because on Calibrite Pro level devices, you can go in and choose the backlight type for your display. The easiest way to determine the backlight type that you want to use a lot of times is to go into device manager and just go into monitor. For example, you will see right now that my integrated monitor has a model number next to it. What you would simply do is type this model number into Google and it will pop up with pretty much the panel that you have. For instance, this is an 18 inch panel. It is a 2K resolution. These are all the specs of my panel and the backlight type for this is WLED or white LED. However, what I found out is that if I set the backlight type for this particular laptop displays to white LED, the result Delta E is much higher than if I set it to PFS phosphor. So a lot of times with laptop, it's not really quite as straightforward by just choosing the backlight type that matches your display. Sometimes you have to go in and play around with the backlight type a little bit. Now, what makes this easy, for instance, is if your laptop has an organic LED OLED, you just simply choose OLED and you're good to go, or mini LED. For mini LED, do note that you need to have Calibrite HL devices in order for you to go in and choose the mini LED as the backlight type. That will be the Calibrite Display Plus HL, which is the one that I'll be using, or the Display Pro HL. Now, with this in mind, what I'm going to do is launch Calibrite Profiler and we are going to start our profiling process. So we can see that Calibrite has already recognized my Display Plus HL. I'm going to do a profile on my monitor and I will choose Advanced from the drop down list. Click on Next and this is where we have to choose the display and technology type or display backlight type. So the model number of my display is listed here or you can also get this from the device manager as well and I would Google this to see what backlight type it is. If you're uncertain what backlight type your display is, white LED is always a safe option to choose from the list. If you know specifically what you have, for instance, OLED, you can just choose that. Or if you have a mini LED laptop, you can choose that. But do note that only the HL device, which is the Display Pro HL and Display Plus HL, have the option for mini LED from the drop down list. Now, when it comes to a backlight display like the one that I have right now, white LED is technically the white option, but in my testing, I found that PFS phosphor produce a much lower delta E. So this is something that you may have to experiment with a little bit, especially if you don't have a very specific backlight type such as OLED or mini LED. I will choose the photo preset and what I'm going to do is move my mouse towards the top here and start out with D65. I'll click on that to customize these settings. If you're going to do a profiling for pre-press, you can certainly choose D50 or there are many custom options that you can choose. You can also go in and type in the color temperature that you want to use or measure these value as well. For now, I'll choose D65. When it comes to luminance, for this particular guide, I'm going to choose 100 nits. 
And the best luminance range I can recommend for photo and video, and especially for photographers who print, is to choose a range between 80 to 120 nits. This is going to guarantee that your prints is not gonna come out from the printer or come back from your lab much darker than what you're really seeing on the display. Now, another thing that you're gonna notice as well is if you go in and set the nit or the luminance range to the 80 to 120 that I told you, your display is going to be much darker than what you're used to, but this is the optimal range for print. And I would argue that this is also the optimal range for video as well, because what you're really doing is you're tuning your display to be darker. So you're really editing to a lowest common denominator for display brightness. And if it shows on a brighter display, it's still going to look good. Now you can certainly go in and choose custom. There are many from the drop down list. You can also dial in the value as well, but for now I'm going to choose 100 nit. Click on next and what we're going to get is the contrast ratio. For this, I am going to use the native, which is the default, but you can go in and choose the many custom options from measuring the black point to dialing in the black point that you want to use. I'll choose native right now. Gamma 2.2 is a good one for photography. However, if you do video workflow in Rec. 709, I highly recommend coming to click on custom and choosing 2.4. That's going to be the best match value that you can use. Another thing that I do want to point out is that there is an option for BT1886 gamma curve. Now there's only three devices from Calibrite that are going to allow you access to these options. That would be the i1 Display Plus, Color Checker Display Plus, and the Display Plus HL from Calibrite. So only these three devices will enable the BT1886 option. And these are the more advanced device from Calibrite and also X-Rite before. For now, I'm gonna choose 2.2. I'll click on next to which everything in the advanced profile option, I'm gonna leave this at the default. And last thing is the number of patch set. For time, I'm gonna choose 118, but if you're doing this for your own workflow, I highly recommend choosing Advanced 211 or Advanced Plus at 461. Do note that with Advanced and Advanced Plus, you can also add in your own image to which Calibrite Profiler will generate a few extra patches for it to measure out of your image as well, so you can certainly do that. For now, I'll choose 118 and click on Next. My device is active, but the save preset is now showing yellow. That's because we have gone in and changed some of the settings up here. What I can simply do if I know I'm gonna come and use this setting again so I don't have to go in and dial everything in, I can click on Save Preset. So for this, I'm gonna save it as Razor PFS Phosphor. That's the backlight type. Now you can name this whatever you like really, but I would give it some description so you know what settings you choose. And what I'm gonna do here is type in L100. That means this is corresponding to the Luminance 100 or 100 nits luminance that I want. I'll click on save. Now you can see that that screen and I'll click on start measurement. For this, the only thing that I can really change on this display is the brightness. I'll click on continue and it's going to pop up the screen. It's telling me to position the device on the display. So for any Calibrite colorimeter, what you would simply do is grab the device, pop up the cap and rotate it to the back. Now in the front, there is a felt lining that prevents any stray light from coming in. So you can really technically do profiling in a bright environment like this. And one last thing is that there is a counterweight. You would simply just press on that little groove that you feel with your hands and you can just simply move the wire up and down and adjust the counterweight accordingly. There's no need to apply a lot of pressure when it comes to the wire itself. I'm gonna position this on the display and verify that it's laying flat. And for me to do that, I'm gonna tilt the display back a little bit. For now, I'm gonna click on next, and the first thing it's going to do is measure the brightness of my display. So with this, there's two ways, or a few ways of really approaching this. What I'm gonna do is show you the method going from full brightness, and what you're gonna do is count how many times you have to go down to reach that range that you want, or get in within that range that you want for luminance. So I'm gonna guess that my display will probably be around like maybe seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven gets me to around 101 nits. This is pretty much almost right on. I'm gonna go with this. Now do note that on your computer, if you're not getting within the exact range or if you're within like plus minus five, and I would argue that on laptop display plus minus 10, sometimes you just have to go with it because it's really hard to get this result to be repeatable. And the only way that I found so far to really get this precisely is to go in and do these count. Another thing that you can certainly do as well is rather than going from full brightness, you can also go from 
the you know lowest dimmest point of your display and count how many times you have to go up as well so two different ways of going about that but i know that for my particular laptop seven count it's pretty much going to be where i have to choose to get my laptop display to 100 nits I'll click on next and this is going to start the measurement process. So I'll have this go through and then afterwards what we're going to do is do a validation to see how the results are. I'll show you some tips with this program and then we'll wrap this up. I'll be back soon. The measurement is finished. I'll click on next. This is showing the colors that was measured. I'll click on next again and I'll move the device to the side so I can give this profile name. So you can certainly change this. However, I highly recommend leaving the date in there, although I'm going to change the convention a little bit by not putting a dashes in there. This is to note when the profile was created, the date that was created. And it's always a good reminder as well, because we want to go in and have our display reprofile around every four weeks or so at the maximum. This way we guarantee we're looking at the most accurate color possible because our display do ship over time, although in a small amount, we're not going to see it, but these devices will correct for those changes that are happening. You can certainly set the different reminders for however many weeks as well that you want to choose. For example, by default, I think it's at four weeks. However, because I do so many profiling anyway, I'm going to choose none for this. Now, another thing that you can certainly do with the profile name is not only just include, for instance, a date, but you can also choose the backlight type. For instance, if you're experimenting with different backlight type to see which one's going to produce the lowest delta E, for instance, I'll type in PFS for this because I'm using VFS phosphor and for this I'm using L100. This is telling me that the luminance is 100 and I'll also put in another notation as well. This is C. So this is C is short for count and for my laptop I know it's seven so I'll say C7. That means from full brightness I'm going to come down seven times and it's always a good idea to have a reminder there so that we don't forget the magic number for our display to bring it to the proper luminance level. So I'm going to click this and save this profile out. And with this, I'll move the device back in the middle of the display for now. We can do before and after. We can take a look at the profile information to which you can compare this to, for instance, sRGB. I'll compare this to P3. You can see that it's coming close to P3. It's probably written in like the 90 something percent range on this one. So that's good to see. And you can see the overlap for instance with Adobe RGB. It's much closer to P3 on this one. And the other thing you can do is check on the profile curve. Now the curve is going to be the important thing you want to look at because in general when it comes to display profiling, choosing the backlight type will also help align these red, green, and blue curve values. So you, what you want is the value to line up as close as possible. So based on this laptop, they do deviate a little bit towards like the higher end, but this is going to be okay. So I'm going to leave it as such. And what I'm going to do now is click on validation. So this is going to validate my profile. What I'm going to do is choose Color Checker 24. There's an option to choose Digital SG96 from Profiler, which is really great. But for now, I'll do 24. Click on Next. The device is already on the display. I haven't closed that down, so I'll leave it like that. I'll click on Next. And in this screen, you have to click on Start Measurement in order for it to start the process. Otherwise, you'll be staring at the white circle. One thing that I do want to share with us before we get to the end is that for a display profiling, when you're doing a validation, you want Delta E value to be fairly low. Anything below three is considered good for photo. Anything below two is considered imperceptible to normal human vision, which is the exact value that we want. So we're gonna see what this particular profile produce. All right, so I'm gonna click on next and I'll bring the device down from the display. Interestingly enough, for all the patches, I'm able to get 0.7, which is really great. So the average for all the patches on this one is 0.7. This is below one. The Delta E is extremely good on this. However, for the max, I mean, you can see that of the highest 10% average is 1.9. So it's still under two, but there is one patch or one color in this particular case that is showing 2.8. Now, when it comes to laptop displays, there is really not much you can do to bring the Delta E value down. You can certainly try to go in and profile the display again, but most of the time, the value that you get are going to be what you're really going to get. And this is also the reason why we tend to sometimes choose an external display that has a much better capability and can be calibrated to a much better extent. I mean, one of the things I'll I'll also point out as well as that on the external display I mean you can see how thick it is on the external display versus the one built into a laptop and that's saying a lot about the backlight that they're being used inside the electronic circuit and everything else too you can save this report out to which for example you can give this a name what I'm going to do is I'll call this PFS 
L100 and I'll save that. I'll click on finish to which this is going to wrap this whole thing up. Now, another thing that I do want to point out in here is that in Calibrate Profiler, there is the profile manager. Now, most of the time, what we can do is right click on our desktop, go into display setting to which this will launch up. And you can certainly choose, for instance, a different profile that you have for your display and you can choose from this list. However, Calibrate Profiler makes this easy with the profile manager. For instance, I have gone in and played around with a few profiles on this laptop already. You can see that the one active there. However, I click on another one, I can simply just activate it from here. It will automatically change this in Windows settings for me so I don't have to do anything. If I don't want a profile anymore, I can simply delete it from here and it will remove it from my system. Now, the other thing too is that let's say I didn't give it a descriptive name. Well, pretty much it's going to tell me the profile detail at the very bottom as well. So that's always a good information to have regarding your profile. One last thing that I want to quickly show you, if we go home, for instance, and for instance, I'll come in and try to do a profile on my display. Again, I'll click on next. Under save preset, this is where I can come in and choose, for example, Razer PFS L100 and all the settings that I have dial in during this profiling process will automatically be there. I can click on next and start the measurement right away without having to go through and dial in all those values again. I know there's a lot of information recovered. I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell renew and in Art Retrust. <laughs>